HDB Strategic Farms are about putting research into practice. Rob Fox is the Strategic Farm West host here at Squab Pool Farm in Leamington Spa. Uh, so I'm Rob Fox, I'm the host farmer for the Strategic Farm West um, here um, just outside Leamington Spa in Warwickshire. Um, we're going to do a quick overview of uh, the 2020 harvest year. Yeah, obviously, like much of the country, a very, very difficult year for us. Um, come, come sort of autumn planting, we only managed to get a fraction of our winter crops um, planted. We did, we managed to plant 300 acres of oilseed rape across the land that we farm. Um, unfortunately, due to flea beetle weather conditions, it's starting too dry and then it ending too wet. Um, unfortunately, we lost all of our oilseed rape. Um, winter wheat, we managed to plant 50 acres in November. Um, and then we didn't get anything else in until February where we managed to get another couple of hundred acres in. Wheat did just under six tonne, um, which is, is some of the worst we've had here. Um, and then we had a, obviously a massive acreage of spring barley and spring beans like a lot of, like a lot of other people. Spring barley actually fared okay. We've, we've, averaged, um, we've averaged about 6.2, 6.3 tonne to the hectare, which is where we'd usually expect to be on an average year with spring barley. So the weather, yeah, so the weather um, had a massive effect on our establishment. So flea beetle affected harvest 2019 and harvest 2020 greatly. Harvest 2019, we lost about two thirds of the rape crop. Harvest 2020, we lost it all due to weather and flea beetle. Um, so we were gearing up to not put any rape in the ground this year, like a lot of farmers have, or a lot of farmers were thinking. Um, and actually, as you can see behind us, um, it was actually a very good establishment year for all seed rape. Flea beetle pressure has been very, very low around here this year. This crop hasn't had an insecticide on it at all. Um, so it's kind of swung round the other way, surprisingly. Mainly the weather, I think, was actually in our favour when we came to drill. Yeah, so obviously very, very wet through end of September, October, November and December and into January. Um, we, did, uh, we just couldn't get back on the ground in, in, in September. We spun a little bit of wheat on, um, on a block where we, we drilled half of it, it got rained off. Um, so we spun the rest on and, and, and worked that in. It did come, but uh, very open seed beds, um, continual rain through um, November, December and January. Um, and then February, we had, a, we had a quite a dry period, end of January and into the first week of February, and we actually got back on got a few hundred acres of wheat in um, in the first week of February. We were slapping ourselves on the back thinking everything was fine and dandy and then of course February turned into the wettest February we've ever had. So that again badly affected the establishment of some of the right, um, uh, wheat that we managed to get in in February. So then we lost, we lost a further sort of 25-30 acres um, of that wheat just because it sat waterlogged for, for far too long. So yeah, usually we're, we're, we've got quite a lot of black grass um, over all of the farms, um, but with having a, um, a very high percentage of the acreage in a spring crop this year, um, it's meant that we've been able to get on with the Roundup, get that sprayed off a few more times than we usually would. So it has been an opportunity to try and get ground a bit cleaner, try and get on top of some of the black grass. Um, and it's also meant that because the bulk of our crop didn't go in until February, March, April. Um, we had quite low um, inputs on on all of those crops, so uh, we were spending less on on, on fertilizer and um, we were spending less on herbicides anyway because um, because they were very late drilled or, or spring drilled. So the weather had an impact on all of the trials. We managed to carry on with the, uh, the flowering margin trial. We managed to carry on with the establishment trial. We had to drop a um, low fungicide trial on winter wheat because we didn't get that crop drilled. Um, but we also had the opportunity to establish another trial on a field which we left fallow, um, splitting that field up into some of it just in, in a, um, a sort of natural regen fallow um, compared with a mix of uh, radish and phacelia and compared with a mix of um, uh, home saved beans and barley seed as well to see if having a crop growing on that fallow um, helped it 
helped keep the ground in a better condition when it went back into a winter wheat this time. Uh, so that was something that we did manage to add in, uh, which will be a good one to look at. Can we take anything positive from 2020? Uh, we've mentioned the, the weeds, we're, we're, we got a lot of black grass, so yes, there was the opportunity to try and clean up some of the fields with a bit of extra, a few extra sprays, where usually they would have been in a winter crop or an autumn planted crop. Um, we always, we're always learning, no matter what, no matter what the weather does to us, we, we always learn something. In 2012, we learnt when not to try and maul winter wheat into some of these really wet clays when we had a really wet autumn and winter then. So we've been looking at the health of our soils all the way through from back when we were a monitor farm before the strategic farm as well. We're quite varied in soil type here. We run from some light to medium clay loams, uh, a little bit of sand at this end of the farm, all the way down to some really horrible snotty Eversham series clay. Um, but one of the um, um, one of the harder things we have to deal with is a, is a, a red marl, um, which is a, a, a heavy clay soil, 30-40% clay. Um, it, can behave, uh, it can behave like a sand in the dry and like a clay in the wet. And that's one of the areas where we know we've got to do, um, we've got to do a lot more to try and get that soil into better condition. A lot of that I think is going to revolve around organic matter of some type. I'm still uncertain about what the best organic matter is to try and put back into that soil. Letting the worms do their job, trying to increase worm numbers because we know that's where we're really low on some of that, um, on, the, on, on the red marl in particular. What we've noticed this year, this very difficult year with the establishment trials, we can always see the different treatments, the different plots um, and how different crops in different years established. So in 2019, some of the rape established very well where it was direct drilled. Um, but then the beans didn't like the direct drilled plots this year and did better where we'd move the ground at a deeper depth. So. That trial is always throwing up, no matter what the year, no matter what the crop, it's always throwing up some, some really interesting differences. Uh, the flowering strips is more of a longer term trial because we're looking at the impact of beneficial insects on the crop. And I think that's something that you won't, you won't notice year on year. I think that's something that will build up over time. So that, I think that's one where we'll see a lot more differences in year five and year six. So hopefully going forward into next year, um, we'll have some good things to look at.